Chargé. Paris brisé. Paris martyrisé. Mais Paris libéré. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Omaha Beach. As all of you will know, I actually went to France this summer to spend three weeks there as a sort of a vacation and it was glorious. It was absolutely beautiful. Uh, France is a beautiful country, really, really is so. Uh, I can see why, why we Germans are so attracted to the place, really. Um, it's, it's just, it's a great time there, you know, good food, beautiful countryside. Um, contrary to what people say, also very, very nice people. Just once again, as I said earlier, avoid Paris, but on the whole, it's just a great time. Now, I, of course, also used those days to uh, to go to Normandy. It was my first time in Normandy, and I decided to, you know, check it out. Um, probably not a lot of German tourists in Normandy for maybe even understandable reasons. Uh, definitely understandable reasons, actually. Um, in fact, I, I, I sometimes looked into the guest books of various museums and, and, and places, and I never saw anybody who was German who wrote in them, but uh, it's usually just American, Brits, uh, even French sometimes, but uh, that's it. Not that I really should be surprised by, by this. Uh, it's, it's, it's not like Germans will, uh, will go on a pilgrimage to, to Normandy every year. Now, I'm going to have uh, quite a few pictures here running in the background, giving you kind of an impression of what you can see and where. I will always have a little bit of text uh, explaining where these locations are. But overall, I kind of want to just give you guys a, a rundown of what uh, happened to me in Normandy, you know, what I saw, what I think about it. And hopefully this will somehow also help you guys, if you plan to come to Normandy, to kind of what to expect. Because um, the first thing I actually did before going to Normandy, I went to a site... Um, I'm sure many of you will know it. It's called TripAdvisor. And I kind of looked at what is there to do in Normandy, you know, what are kind of the reviews of these places. And I've got to say that TripAdvisor, at least in this time, I sometimes use it when I go to, to other countries and it usually is pretty spot on. Um, but with Normandy, I felt it was kind of off. So I just want to kind of explain things a little bit from my perspective and uh, hopefully give you kind of an accurate image um from what to expect when you go to Normandy and, uh, and so forth. Before we do that, however, I'd like to introduce you to Marine. Marine Delille, uh, she and her husband actually run a shop in Bayeux. Now, Bayeux is a beautiful town, absolutely gorgeous, and not a single shot was fired during the Second World War in that town. The Germans kind of just packed up and left. Uh, the French took control. And a couple of hours later, I believe, the Allies kind of rolled in and the, the town was officially liberated. But Marine owns a shop in Bayeux and it is not as kind of souvenir shop per se as uh, as so many shops in in Normandy have become the the region really has a, a kind of a big reliance on on tourism but this shop is a little bit different uh you will also find a couple of things in there that could pass as a souvenir but her husband uh Jerome is in fact a great fan of aviation just like me and well just like you guys as well since uh since since this is what the channel is really about, and you wouldn't be here if you didn't like planes. Her shop, in fact, or their shop, uh, to be more accurate here, has a vampire in it. Yes, a vampire. Swiss Army vampire. They kind of took it apart and put the various pieces in various places in their shop. It's absolutely amazing to see such a, and such a jet, such a construction in that, uh, that shop. I spent roughly one hour in that uh, shop, uh, also talking to Marine, uh, buying a couple of things for myself. And I just want to give you guys a recommendation here. The shop Fantastic Attic is in Bayeux. I will also have links in the description box below, going to their Facebook page where you can see more pictures of their vampire. They also have a couple of videos of how the vampire arrived. And it was just nice to, to, to find this place because there was just such an obvious and genuine interest into aviation from them. Um, that I just, I just felt at home in that shop. In fact, I also bought a painting. Um, well, actually, it's a, it's a poster of a painting for uh, most of my uh, <laughs> souvenir money uh, that I had kind of saved up for France. It is a picture by uh, Richard Taylor called Evening Reflections. You'll, you'll be seeing it right now. It is actually signed by two German aces. And it is kind of my new gem. Uh, I'm going to have it framed and put into my room uh, very soon. It's kind of um, one of the fondest memories I probably have from this uh, from this holiday. So if you ever find yourself in Bayeux, check out Fantastic Attic. Um, send my regards, and I hope that you won't be disappointed. Um, in fact, I'm sure you won't be disappointed because the, the shop is really, really nice. Especially upstairs. Go upstairs. Check it out. 
Anyway, let's talk about Normandy, let's talk about museums, let's talk about the beaches and so on. First of all, Normandy is full if, of historical relics. Second of all, no, they're not everywhere, but yes, they kind of are. It's it's a little bit tricky. Now, Normandy, when you drive around in Normandy, you will just learn to appreciate immediately what it meant to actually take that beach and, second of all, establish a foothold, because that countryside is ambush territory galore. Um hedgerows everywhere. Sometimes you can't even see, you know, you're driving on a street and you can't see 50 meters ahead of you because the, the road just curves and curves and curves and there's hedgerows here or hedgerows there. And it's just, you know, if you had a barrel sticking out of every bush, um, nobody would have ever been able to, to, to take this territory. Um, it is just amazing to still see that reflection of how the battlefield looked uh, back 70 years ago right now uh, as, as you know, we live and, uh, and uh, kind of visit this place. That being said, of course, there is a lot of tourism going to Normandy. In fact, we talked to the uh, madame that was running the uh, little chateau that we had uh, rented a room in for our duration, uh, for our visit in, in Normandy. And we kind of got talking and she told us that when, for example, tourists from America come to uh, France, it is always Paris and Normandy. Yeah, And when uh, Asians come to uh to uh, France, it is usually Paris and Mont Saint Michel, and sometimes they go for Normandy to get there. And this region has become quite reliant on tourism, and as such, there are a few places, and you will immediately spot them uh, on the side of the road. There are just, you know, these, these kind of cheesy little souvenir shops, and you know, I go there in there as well just to have a look, just to have a quick laugh. Um, but you gotta watch out a little bit. Um, you know, some of these shops, uh, I, I wouldn't really recommend. Uh, and I'm, I'm definitely happy to see that even though the, the region is quite reliant on that tourism, it hasn't gone overboard yet. And I hope it, it will never will. But, you know, you do have uh, some shops that, that, that hold definite merit that have provide a little bit of quality uh, to your experience instead of, you know, trying to get your money. Now, that being said, you are probably going to be visiting some of the beaches. And most likely, Omaha is going to be on the list. Now, what you got to realize is that the region, even though it is of intense historical value, has moved on. So a lot of places like Omaha Beach don't anymore look like Omaha Beach. It's, it's essentially a residential area. There's houses everywhere. Uh, a lot of Americans seem to live there. In fact, you all you saw American flags everywhere, waving from flagpoles on in in you know in these houses in these very nice uh, country style houses. And going to Omaha Beach, if if you know do it yourself and you don't have a guide, which is per by the way perfectly fine. Uh, I know there's a lot of you know guides um, offering tours around Normandy, showing you the best places and so on. But if you can do it yourself, if you, you know if you're fine driving around Normandy, you can definitely do it yourself. Everybody speaks English, by the way, guys. Everybody speaks English. I don't think there is a region in Europe, except maybe Great Britain, where people are so readily and so happy to talk English to you than Normandy. They, they, they immediately do it. Um, you know, it's, it's not, I know France has that reputation of, no, we, you know, on parle français ici, but, um, Normandy, not the case. Absolutely not. They will speak English to you. And if you find, uh, a Norman, uh, not speaking English with you and he works in tourism office, then, well, <laughs> then you know what, take a picture of him and, and put it on your wall because that is a rarity that you can probably sell in 20 years time for a lot of money. So yeah, a lot of these places have moved on and you won't just, you know, find a lot of relics from that time. You will find them occasionally though and this is where you have to start looking. You know. At Omaha Beach, for example, there is this bunker that we found by chance uh, looking over the beach, um, or what used to be the beach back then, it, you know, it had, geographically it has a little bit changed, and now it's a little bit further inland. Uh, but we arrived there by by taking a wrong turn, and you know there were no there were no indications or anything, and it was kind of a chance encounter. Um, there are of course uh, museums uh, that have a lot of panels everywhere, but some of the smaller areas, for example, the Massey Battery, um, they have maybe one or two handmade. Uh, <laughs> signs um that with all the crossroads you have with all the like small paths in normandy where you have to drive with your car uh, it's it's a little bit challenging to find uh, that being said we actually arrived at the massey batteries and back in the and we were there early in the morning it was still kind of drizzling apparently it's it's kind of you kind of have to walk through trenches uh, we didn't really have to ride shoes for that so we skipped it 
But there are some of these chance encounters that you have in Normandy. They also probably make up the charm of the of the region because you will drive through a region that has moved on from that battle, but constantly there are reminders just popping up left and right of you that definitely make the visit uh, something special from time to time. Now let's uh, talk about the museums there because chances are that you will probably be going into a museum at some point in time when you go to Normandy. And um, here's here's the thing about these museums. They are not very good. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to say this bluntly. On As I said, on TripAdvisor, some of these museums have like five stars. I don't understand it. I think it is kind of something where people go there and they feel like they have to give a positive review because you know, of the extraordinary feat of, you know, past generations that, that occurred here. Um, but some of these, especially, for example, let's, let's start with the one that we visited first, the Omaha, uh, the Omaha Memorial Museum. It's old. Um, you know, that might not be a bad thing, but you go in there and you really see that this place hasn't been overhauled for 30 years. Every, all the puppets are still in the same locations, you know, everything is just old and, and not renovated. And that is not in, in itself a bad thing. In fact, I think the money I paid for that uh, museum it was roughly five to six uh, euros is perfectly uh, fine. But it is not something where you go in there and you got smacked by all the things there. You, you, you're kind of overwhelmed with these historical objects and relics and uh, memoralia. But at the same time, it's, it's not really a quality place. And it's, it's one of those cases where the museums, uh, including this Omaha Memorial Museum, the museums are worth a visit because you are there. Uh, and not because they are specifically good. It's part of your experience of going to Normandy to go to these museums. And as I, as I said already, I definitely encourage you to do so from time to time. But keep in mind that, that these places are not high budget places. Uh, some of them have been created some time ago and, and their selling point is the kind of artifacts they have and nothing more essentially. And that brings me to another point. And this is actually something that I realized at the, the Overlord Museum. Now the Overlord Museum is right next to the American Cemetery. And again, once again, chances are if you go to the American Cemetery, you will also go to the uh, Overlord Museum. The Overlord Museum is quite new. In fact, it is very new. It's quite modern also when you come in and the, the you know, display of all the objects is quite well done. Uh, lighting is a little bit awkward for pictures, but you know, what do you expect? Um, not a, not a big deal. However, in the Overlord Museum, I've noticed something and it kept reoccurring to me as I was going through Normandy. And that is that history seems to be simplified. It's very black and white. It's very good guys, bad guys, uh, heroes, villains. And the Overlord Museum is just a perfect example. And I'm not quite sure if this is done just, you know, to give a very easy way of connecting to history or if this is geared towards a specific kind of audience. Um, I don't know really. And the Overlord Museum was just, I, I it just struck me uh, when you read through the text that uh, you have occasionally in that museum explaining you what was going on and, and the kind of the events leading up to the invasion, the invasion itself and anything that happened after it, it's so black and white. And while again, the museum is worth a visit because you are there and because you can see, you know, a panther, uh, a Sherman, you can see, uh, you know, I think a panzer four is there. There's a Wolverine there. There's a Sexton there. Uh, there's a plane there. You know, it's uh, there's a V1 rocket, in fact, in Overlord Museum. Just keep in mind that what you read is probably not as complex as it was in reality. And pick up a book, you know, read about the invasion of Normandy yourself and kind of take that as your uh, historical uh, source instead of what the, the, the kind of museum tells you. Now, moving on, once again, we go back to Bayeux. And in Bayeux, there is probably the museum that I generally do recommend. And that is the um, Museum for the Battle of Normandy. Uh, it has, in fact, a couple of tanks outside. You cannot miss it. It's just more or less across from the British War uh, Cemetery. And it has a tanks outside. You cannot miss it. There's a Hetzer there, a Panzer 38T. Uh, it wasn't really called Hetzer back then, but we'll call it Hetzer now. There's a Sherman, once again a Wolverine, and there's also there's also a Crocodile Churchill, uh, which amazed me really because I didn't really think about you know Churchill's you know, Churchill tanks being in Normandy, which is absolutely stupid because they were there. Um, but it just you know for that was the first time that something struck me that was British because before that 
I've only seen American stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, the Brits were here as well. Which, by the way, it's not, you know, I don't want to be sounding here insulting towards the Brits. But in Normandy, a lot of stuff points towards the Americans and very little points to the Brits and the Canadians. And while the Americans definitely made up the big share of the invasion, um, I kind of feel that sometimes the the other nations are, are marginalized um, for, for some reason. But then again, if you are essentially from Omaha Beach all the way to the west, that is all American territory, essentially. Um, once you, you know, go to Bayou and then t- towards the east, that's where you start re- uh, seeing more Canadian and uh, and British stuff. Also a little bit of a hint here, uh, depending on what you want to see, uh, you can kind of arrange your visit by that. This museum as well, it's quite big inside. It is definitely worth a visit. Um, a lot of information in here, actually. Uh, they have a specific section also on uh, General de Gaulle. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody's a big fan of that guy. I am not really, uh, from what I've read. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of him, <laughs> per se. But, you know, he was an important uh, historical figure during that time. And if you don't know much about him, you know, you can you can inform yourself there as well. I certainly did, and I learned a couple of things about him as well. That being said, in Bayeux, there is also, as I already mentioned, the world-famous tapestry for uh, William the Conqueror, and this is definitely worth a visit as well. It is, has nothing to do with World War II. This is 100% European history. In fact, Norman, Norman history and also, of course, British history or English history uh, since the invasion took place in 1066. But if you have just the faintest kind of interest of what lo- life was in uh, in Europe, uh, during the Middle Ages, essentially, then go there. It is, I wouldn't call it specifically beautiful, but it is definitely impressive. Um, just keep in mind that you might want to go there during kind of the midday hours where everybody's eating. That way you can get in there quickly. They give you a free audio guide, uh, which kind of takes you around the tapestry within 10 minutes. Once you leave that room where the tapestry is, by the way, you can't take any pictures, but once you leave that room, you can't go back. So go during the midday hours when everybody else is eating, Take that audio guide, go around the tapestry, and then walk the way back you came from. Do not walk out out of that that dark room. Walk the way you come back and kind of look at the detail of the tapestry itself. Um, because the the audio guide kind of takes you ten minutes. It's designed to give you a quick impression. It's designed also kind of to shuffle people through the museum in in a in a kind of fast pace, so everybody gets to see the tapestry. Um, take your own time and enjoy you know a little bit of. Uh, medieval history uh, from Europe. Now, before I actually end this video, um, I just want to once again say that, you know, Normandy, I definitely enjoyed it. I, I might have sounded a little bit critical here, but I, I kind of want to give you guys the, you know, the correct and, and genuine impression that I had from Normandy in some of these places. I think that is the kind of best way of actually selling this place, because I definitely uh, believe that a visit to Normandy is something that you should do, not only if you have the faintest interest in kind of World War II, well, not only because uh, a lot of things happened there in World War II, but also because of just the beauty of the, the, the towns and the small villages, uh, Bayeux especially, and of course the countryside. It's such a calm region as well. It's such a calm. It's kind of, even though you know there was a big battle happening here, you know, there were lots of casualties on both sides. It's It's relaxed. It's very down to earth. It's very welcoming. And you kind of feel like home. At least I felt at home for some reason. I don't know. But there you have it, guys. That was my kind of impression and rundown of Normandy. If you have any kind of questions about the region, put them down below. If you have been to Normandy before and you have visited these places as well, please give your opinion on them as well. Kind of help people out in the comment section if you see anything that uh, somebody's asking for help and you want to you know, help them out, uh, definitely do that as well. I'm always so impressed of uh, how we as a community you know, kind of help each other out. Also tell me if you are planning to go to Normandy, if you have any specific question about, you know, where to go or any kind of worries or um, concerns you do have before going on a trip, put it down below and I'll definitely also try to help you out. If you have any friends going to Normandy soon, just, you know, share the, share the video with them. Maybe it helps them out as well. And as always, I wish you guys a great day, good hunting and see you on the sky.